Today, we will discuss The Witcher Season 3 Part 2 Everything You Missed, so before we move any further make sure to subscribe to our channel. Let's dive in. The Witcher Season 3 Part 1 concludes with a subtle yet somewhat slow burn storyline, with a climax at the end, leaving us wanting even more from the series. However, amidst the slow pacing, the season still manages to unveil the mastermind antagonist at the very end of this installment. The revelation came as a shock for those who are blissfully unfamiliar with the spoilers from the book series. As Vildefortz emerges as the treacherous mage behind the nefarious schemes, manipulating characters like Lydia and Rience in the pursuit of capturing Ciri, the Witcher takes a menacing turn with a lot of uncertainty and danger looming over Ciri and her found family. However, beyond Vildefortz, the series presents a plethora of mysterious elements, leaving audiences eagerly seeking answers as they await the second part of the third season. When will Ciri confront the Wild Hunt? Fans eagerly want to know when the foreshadowing surrounding the Wild Hunt will stop, and their standing in the series will be unveiled. Introduced as the A&L Elves, this spectral group of horsemen with their haunting skeleton helmets has relentlessly pursued Ciri, referring to her as the Daughter of Chaos since Season 2. However, their true motives for hunting Ciri have remained undisclosed in the series thus far. In the books by Andrzej Zasapkowski, it is revealed that the Wild Hunt's interest in Ciri was solely driven by the Elder Blood, a powerful lineage running through her veins. They sought to harness its abilities, potentially enabling them to traverse dimensions and conquer other worlds. The series makes the Wild Hunt's presence tangible in the first part when one of their members attempts to touch Ciri's shoulder and leaves behind a helmet in her world, prompting Ciri to have a reality check. Fans await the moment when Ciri finally confronts them. There is also the potential for Aridin, whom we have already seen in Blood Origin as the army general of Sintria and the leader of the Wild Hunt, to make a powerful comeback. Viewers have been eagerly anticipating the confrontation between Aridin and Ciri, as it promises to be a pivotal and intense moment in the series. It is likely that such a confrontation will take place in the second part or subsequent seasons. Why was Vildefort's hunting down Ciri? The Witcher Season 3 introduces a multitude of antagonistic elements in the show. Foremost among them is Vildefort's, who finally emerges from the shadows, but his true motives for hunting down Ciri remain ambiguous. Although driven by the familiar desire to obtain the Elder Blood, Vilgefortz's intentions appear more sinister compared to others, given his disturbing scheme of creating clones of Ciri. This peculiar and monstrous approach adds an extra layer of menace to his character. As the second part unfolds, Geralt will likely attempt to confront Vilgefortz, only to find himself at a disadvantage. Vilgefortz has already sown the seeds of conflict within the Brotherhood, hinting at an impending clash during his conversation with Geralt. Consequently, by uncovering Vilgefortz's nefarious motives, viewers will also discover the inevitable doom of the Brotherhood. Is Imhair going to be the major antagonist of the series? In the Season 2 finale of The Witcher, Imhair Var Emrys, the Emperor of Nilfgaard, is revealed to be Duni, Ciri's father. While viewers may initially speculate that his motive for hunting Ciri is driven by fatherly affection, it becomes clear that Imhire has ulterior motives that extend beyond a mere familial bond. His desire to have Ciri by his side is not solely for personal reasons. It serves as a means for him to easily conquer the Northern Kingdoms. In the books, it is hinted that Imhar's interest in Ciri goes beyond political power and conquest. He harbors an incestuous desire for Ciri due to her possessing elder blood, and this aspect of his character may be explored further in later parts of Season 3. Also, the role of Emhar as a major antagonist will depend on the specific turn the series takes and the emphasis placed on his character's arc within the narrative. What were Philippa and Dijkstra doing at the Conclave? Dijkstra, the cunning spymaster of Redania, 
has a grand scheme in mind involving Ciri. He aims to secure her as the wife of King Visimir, which would grant them control over Sintra's throne and extend their authority over the entire north. Dijkstra is already aware of the involvement of certain mages with Nilfgaard. This explains that he had already set the stage for a brewing conflict within the corridors of the Brotherhood, as indicated in the Part 1 final. It is likely that Dijkstra and Philippa will play a significant role in either attacking the mages or escalating the existing conflict, offering a thrilling and climactic storyline in the upcoming second part of Season 3. As mentioned in the source material, Philippa Eilhart, who was a major antagonist in the story, had a rich backstory. Her involvement with various factions and her cunning attributes make her an evil yet powerful mage in the political landscape of The Witcher. The series has the potential to explore her motivations and schemes, offering us an in-depth understanding of her complicated character. Will Fringilla come back in part two? What will be Francesca's fate? Fringilla, who almost remained unnoticed throughout part one of season three, is expected to make a comeback in part two. There are two possible paths she may take. Either she will join forces with Kahir once again, remaining loyal to the Emperor of Nilfgaard, or she will undergo a transformation, emerging as a stronger mage driven by a desire for revenge against Amir for the punishment she endured. Similarly, the fate of Francesca Findebear, the Queen of the Elves of Dal Blathana, remains unknown. After suffering the loss of her child, she became a fierce elven queen who fought against humans. Francesca's primary objective was to capture Ciri in order to harness her hen Eicher power, allowing her to create powerful magical weapons and wage war against the humans who had inflicted suffering upon the elves ever since the conjunction of spheres. The upcoming part of season three promises to reveal what will finally become of her. What will be Geralt's standing in the next part? Before Henry Cavill bids his goodbye to the franchise, fans will have the opportunity to savor his portrayal of Geralt of Rivia for an additional five episodes. As the talented actor brings Geralt to life, audiences are eager to witness his nuanced performance and the depth he brings to the iconic character one last time. As the fate of Geralt hangs in the balance, leaving us uncertain about what lies ahead for him, we'll get to see a lot of Geralt's screen time in the third season of The Witcher. Will he be the one to ultimately put an end to Jigstra, the spymaster of Redania, or will Geralt himself be captured by Jigstra, aiming to isolate him from Yennefer and manipulate the situation to his advantage? All these questions will be answered in The Witcher Season 3 Part 2 which will likely present an intricate storyline with a plethora of perils in Ciri and Geralt's path. From the revelation of Vilgefortz as the mastermind to the machinations of characters like Emmer, Philippa, Jigstra, Fringilla, and Francesca, the season promises a suspenseful narrative in the upcoming installment. Share your opinions with us in the comments, and if you're new to our channel then subscribe before leaving. See you in the next video.